It's unusual for American voters to get a real choice in a presidential election, but this is a genuine fork in the road for America and for the world. It's one direction or the other from here. There's no middle way. In broad terms, you could describe it as a choice between the American way and the European way. For the past eight years, President Obama has tried to make America more European because he is a European social democrat at heart. He doesn't really belong in America. He belongs over here in Europe with the rest of the open borders, nothing to do with Islam crowd, making life more dangerous for ordinary people for virtuous reasons. It's what he tried to do in America to some extent with his so European reluctance to even name, let alone confront, Islamic terrorism. And his chosen successor, Hillary Clinton, if elected, intends to up the ante on that score when she brings in all those third world Muslim migrants who are waiting in the wings. Do you really think it will stop with the 65,000 Syrians she's promised? If you're paying attention to what's happening in Europe, you know it won't. And you know you can expect an avalanche of sex crime and jihad violence on American soil. As for Donald Trump, well, yes, you could have had a better candidate, but you could have had a worse one, too. He is a necessary antidote to the poison of political correctness that's destroying Western society's immune system and making us weaker. We cannot afford to get any weaker, however virtuous it makes some people feel. So, even from the correspondence that I get, I know that people are voting for Trump who don't like him, who don't even agree with him on much, but who see him as the only person who's serious about ensuring America's security. And apparently, that still matters to some people. Also, again, unusually in US politics, he seems to genuinely believe what he's saying. There's a passion there that isn't there in Clinton. She's clearly doing it by numbers. She will say literally anything to get elected. She's already said she favours holding two separate political positions, a public one for consumption by the plebs and a private one that the plebs might not like so much. By her own admission, therefore, her word cannot be trusted. But Trump just blurts out what he believes, sometimes unwisely. But at least we can be more sure that he actually means what he says, whereas we can't be sure that Hillary Clinton means anything that she says publicly. Clinton is devious because her politics require her to be devious. She has an ulterior progressive agenda that she doesn't want to talk about because she knows people won't buy it. She's already admitted that's how she operates. And she said she wants America to be part of a hemispheric common market with free trade and open borders. The exact same model that has failed so spectacularly here in Europe and the intended precursor of a world without borders, which of course they all know nobody would vote for, which is why they've been trying to impose it on us by stealth, both in America and in Europe, by allowing our borders to become so porous in defiance of the law. A world without borders would be impossible to govern democratically. It would need to be run by a strong central authority that would quickly morph into an iron fist dictatorship. It's much more likely to end up as a global Soviet Union than a global Switzerland or a global United States. It's what we in Britain managed to push back against with Brexit, our vote to leave the European Union. And it is what's really at stake in this election for Americans. No borders, no security, no democracy, no country. The failed European model is the globalists' ideal. One thing that the Trump campaign has already achieved in this election is that it's given the progressive media the chance to fully reveal just how contemptuous they are of the American people. There's no attempt to provide them with balanced, objective coverage on which to make an informed decision. It's all about manipulating their opinion. CNN couldn't be any more partisan if they had a Stop Trump banner on the screen 24-7. They're so far up their own progressive rectums that if Trump does win, I expect to see half the people at CNN physically explode. The other half will do what progressives always do when they don't get their way. They'll blame the people, the basket of deplorables, and then they'll sulk about it for months afterwards, like the BBC over Brexit. Before that vote, we had to face all the same lies and smears. Everything was racist. It was all about hate. They called us xenophobic little Englanders. And we said, no, we're Great Britainers and we're taking our country back, whether you people like it or not. And they didn't like it one little bit. Months later, they're still griping, still framing everything as if it was a huge mistake, when in fact it was the best thing to happen to Britain since VE Day. 
And Brexit was no freak result. It's symptomatic of a wider trend that's now spreading throughout Europe as the political tide finally turns against the globalist progressive consensus that's done so much damage with its obsession with open borders, mass migration and remote unaccountable government dominated by large corporations. People can see for themselves that the failed European model does not work in their interests so they're reasserting their right while they still can to retake control and to shape the society that they and their children will have to live in. This presidential election is a genuinely once in a lifetime historic opportunity for the American people to do just that. The American way or the European way, finally you get a real choice. And whatever you think about Donald Trump, he has earned his place on the podium. He didn't have a party machine behind him. He had two party machines opposing him all the way, and he still does. Yet he's still there and still popular because he's communicating with people in plain language that reflects the reality they see, not the one they've been told they're supposed to see. And nobody else has been willing to do that. And the political and media establishment hate him for it because he's showing people that they can put their own country and its people first. They can take political control away from the globalists and the corporate interests and they can change the direction of their society if they want to. And that is the last thing that career politicians want us to hear or even to think possible. The whole political class, especially those in the Republican Party, have only themselves to blame for the contempt in which they are now held. They could easily have engaged with people's legitimate concerns at any time, like honest brokers, but they wouldn't do it. And they still won't do it even now, because they are not honest brokers. So somebody came along who would do it. And here is the most important point. It had to be somebody from outside the political bubble or it never would have happened because it wouldn't have been allowed to happen. And this is why the political bubble needs to be burst and deserves to be burst and the American people will never have a better chance to do it. Anyway, that's it. I don't want to poke my nose in where it's not wanted, but this does affect all of us. So please forgive my intrusion, America, and whatever happens on Election Day, good luck. I think we're all going to need it. Peace.